I want to talk for a second on why it is that the pros are still using the same gear or plugins that emulate old school equipment that was made so long ago. Like, why isn't there a modern solution for all this stuff that, you know, just has a bunch of robots doing all this stuff? Why are we still using the same plugins? Well, let me explain why. Music is a very interesting thing because there's no two people who sound the same, like their vocals. There's no two guitars that sound the same because everybody's hands and the amp and the strings and the temperature outside, the humidity, so many things are going to influence what that guitar sounds like. Everything from the pick used down to whether that guy who played washed his hands that morning. Every single thing is going to change the way that sounds compared to somebody else. So what that means is that presets are bullshit. Don't get into this world of using presets. All that's doing is prolonging your ability to understand what's really going on. <clears throat> what you need to do is use pieces of gear that were created back in the day. Plugins, I'm talking about. You don't have to go spend a fortune. But use the gear that was created. The emulation plugins are great for a reason. I still use an SSL channel on everything, and I know a lot of guys do the exact same thing. And it does. it's not just this one. You could also use the Neve 1073, the API 550B. There's a ton of different things you could use. But the reason these things are magical is because when they were created, the EQ points that they chose, the way they chose to make the curves when you gain or you know when you boost a frequency, the way that curve is drawn is unique. And it sounds a certain way. In other words, it's not just a bell, the way it slightly dips before it comes up, the way it's slightly rounded at the top, the way it's slightly plateaued here and not there. There's a literally a signature like if somebody signed it that's amazing with these pieces of gear. So let me show you a session real quick. I'm going to pull up a Pro Tools session where I have just an example with a 440. This is a 550B, um, API 550B. Now this plugin, if you notice, was chosen. These frequencies were chosen by the guys who created a APIs 550B. 30, 40, 50, 100, 200, 300, 400. This is in the lows. You have the ability to select, say, 50 hertz, then boost at 4 dB, 6, 12, whatever. Now, same thing in the low mids. You notice you can only go to 75. You can't get to 30 anymore. 75 is the lowest, and it goes up to 1K. So you can set it to 1K and then boost 4. You know, you could attenuate 4, attenuate 9, attenuate 12 dB, boost 12 dB. You see what I'm saying? But it's set at 1K. Same thing with the high mids. You set this at, say, 5K, because this goes from 800K to 12.5K. Okay, so it's, it's 800 hertz, rather, to 12.5K. Okay, because hertz becomes kilohertz as soon as it gets over 1,000. So that's why it's 800, 1.5K, 3K, 5K, 8K. So you see what I'm saying? So the idea being you set this to whatever, 8K, and you boost 9 at it, or, or 9 dB at 8K. All right? And a lot of these things, keep in mind, they're not necessarily totally correlated with dB. They're just numbers. And you listen, and then you take the result of what's happening, and then that's, you know, you're boosting, but it's not like a an exact number of dB, the same way it would be if you were boosting something like on a Pro Q3. Like, let me show you the, the Pro Q3, you know, has one of these deals. And when you boost, you know, you could see the 3 dB line. This is 3 dB. So it's giving you much more accurate presentation of what it is that you're doing. But that's not necessarily good. So let's go back to here. The reason it's not good is because by having these choices, that means if I want to boost something in, like if I'm listening to a guitar and I'm like, ooh, it would be great if it had a little more, you know, a little more push in the mid-range, I may want to think, okay, I think in mid-range. Now I have a choice. I have a choice of doing it here at 800 hertz. I could do it at 1.5K. Is this, or I could go to 3K. I could go to 5K. But guess what? By not having that middle section, it takes that thought out of, it should it be 830 or 831 or 840 or 842, which doesn't matter in the scheme of things. And that's the brilliance of this. The way this was designed, it's like puzzle pieces. When you have this across your mix, you got a puzzle that should fit together based on the way everything looks. And it should make sense. You know, that's the beauty of this stuff. 
I have not this 4KB channel strip on everything. So this is what I do. I use this because I have the physical controller and I'm, I love the flexibility an SSL gives you because in the two mid ranges, you have the ability to use them however you want. You can be very creative because you got your lows, you got your highs, and then in your mid range, you have the ability to take each frequency from 200 hertz up to two and a half K this one, 600 hertz up to 7K. So that slight overlap in the middle here, which I find to be a little, I just like it better than the way this is set up. So I, I'll use this for a certain signature that it gives. Cause like I said, it's a different curve. I'll use this when I want that API curve, that certain sound, which is a weighty sound. It's a very interesting, cool, weighty, thick sound. And then you got your SSL when you're looking for a little more precision, all right? And you got your Neve 1073 you could use if you're looking for that sound. These things have sounds. So the idea here is this is going to take a lot of the, the guesswork and the thought process out of exactly where you should be boosting and cutting. You could still use a plugin like this, but I would say get good at the other stuff first because you'll be used. You could and you're keep in mind, there's no visual feedback here other than, you know, the meter on top. The meter's letting you know how hot and how you know you're coming in and how hot you're going out. Other than that, there's no visual feedback unless you have your graph set up like I do. But if you don't have that, there's no visual feedback going on. OK, so what do you do? You don't worry about it. You you mix using your ears. And then once it's sounding good to you, once you think you're living, you could always look over at your PAZ, you know, look over at your TC Electronics, your analyzer, see what's going on. But you don't need to be staring at it. It's not like going to make or break your EQ, the fact that you could stare at it. Trust me. All right. Keep this in mind. This is huge. We got a lot more stuff to come, but there's a reason people use that old gear and you should start using it too. It will get you where you need to be quicker because you are going to be using the tools to help. You hear you want more top end. Well, guess what? You just set this to where you think you want to start the top end. You start boosting until it feels good. You test it with the bell without the bell. You're good to go. You don't have to think about how much you're boosting. This right here is boosting 7.3 at 8, at 8K. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go look for 8K. All right, 8K is over here. I'm going to boost up to sit. Look at what that looks like. This is what it looks like. 7 whatever at 8K. All right, so now I want This looks so aggressive. Tell me that doesn't look aggressive. You may not want it. You may be less likely to do it once you start seeing what you're doing rather than over here. It may just have needed that. It may just need it. OK, and you can mix fearlessly when you're doing it like this. There's no point not to look later, but you shouldn't be letting the way it looks scare you out of making a move. And that's the idea. Use the original the emulations of the gear and you're going to have an easier time not being scared out of making your moves. All right. Go with go with it. Go with it. You got this. I'll see you soon.